Hello everyone, Rick here. Welcome back to my channel. We had a heat wave last week with excessive heat warning alerts ending this past Sunday and it's been about almost three weeks since we've had a proper rain. We had some rain the other night but because the ground is so dry and cracked um, not much of it has you know soaked in and and taken up by the plant roots but it's cooled down a little bit it's still in the mid to high 80s but not as bad as last week which was high 90s it, it didn't reach a hundred but it was really hot um, so I just wanted to share some drought tolerant plants with you my garden is not on any kind of automatic irrigation so during that time we did water at least once a week, so the garden got watered two or three times during that time. And it was just with a hose, so it wasn't like excessive. Just enough to get the plants through um, the week of, of excessive heat. And one of the gardens, which is the hot border, didn't get any irrigation at all. And this is not the first time this has happened here. We've had like two week heat waves, so to me it wasn't that bad. After two weeks is when it really starts to show damage on the plants. So here are some of the drought tolerant plants. And the first one is Echinacea, which is a common cottage garden plant, which is really good at resisting the heat. Um, after about a week or two of no rain is when it, it really starts to, to wilt. All plants, well, a lot of plants I should say, wilt when it gets extremely hot which is normal they're just trying to preserve um, the water but that doesn't mean that you know they actually need like, water you can actually overwater your plants by doing that another one is crocosmia this is crocosmia lucifer i find that it does get spider mites but as you can see here, it's been blooming and blooming. It bloomed all through the heat wave and the hummingbirds really loved it. Some people don't like red in the garden. I love red, well, I love certain reds. I don't like red roses on like a bush. I like a bunch of red roses, like cut flowers looks okay, but growing on like a bush, it looks just weird to me. So I can see why some people don't like reds, but you can have red and combine them with other jewel tones because look we have the echinacea here and the red um, crocosma in the background and they go good together next to the echinacea this is red valerian and that's been blooming since spring so those are some of the drought tolerant plants in the pool garden let's head outside to look at some more we are outside the pool garden in the cotton candy border now and the verbena bonarians. This is still going strong. For some people this is an annual but for me it's a perennial and it self seeds a lot. And this one is quite tall. It's about, I'm six feet tall so this is almost as tall as I am and it's been blooming non-stop. So this is another drought tolerant plant to consider. Oh, I can't get it to focus but I think this would look good with the crocosmia as well so if you had pink and a purple pink and purple borders you can tuck in some reds here and there I was watching Gardener's World and they said the secret to combining red with other colors is to use saturated tones so like think jewel tones together as opposed to pastels and reds they don't really work well together down here is another one is liatris or sometimes called gay feather now coming into bloom this is a prairie plant so it can take um, some drought and it blooms from the top going down and goldfinches love the seed heads That's the clematis, which has been reblooming, and surprisingly, it did quite well during the, the heat wave. It bloomed all through the heat wave, and um, yeah, I'm, I was surprised because I always thought clematis is a thing that needs a lot of water. <laughs> 
This is geranium rosanne, hardy geranium. And this also did well during the heat wave. It bloomed right through. Um, I watered this bed probably over the past week or two twice. So it doesn't need that much water. Which was also another surprise to me. Um, being that this is a, a plant that is common in British gardens and... You know, it, it rains a lot in the UK and not so much here, and I expected this to wilt and it didn't. So this is another good performer to consider. Here is Rose of Sharon. I don't remember the cultivar. I think it's something with blue in it. I don't know. But this just loves the heat. In fact, it doesn't bloom until it gets really hot and it just thrives when it's really hot and dry outside. And it's going to bloom probably right through October. And you see it's full of flowers. Very drought tolerant. We're over by the hot border now. And as I stated earlier, this doesn't get any irrigation at all. So I didn't water this. And I did observe, well, in this section at least, some wilting in the hardy hibiscus. You can see it on the right there. But there are a lot of plants um, bunched together in this part of the hot border. And also, the soil under here is very poor. I believe there used to be a, like a driveway that came through here. So underneath this bed is a lot of like gravels and, and stuff. And I did notice some wilting on this. Um, hardy hibiscus but I think the fact that I gave it a Chelsea chop which is at the end of May I cut it back it wasn't so stressed out during the heat because it didn't have to support so much foliage next to it is a castor bean that's self-seeded there um, so this is an annual but it comes up from seed for, for me every year so I don't have to replant new ones and that's drought tolerant the cannas also do well. Um, they're hardy for me, so they come back. So if cannas work in your area, which is around zone seven in the US and higher, they didn't even like wilt or anything like that. Next to the canna is bronze fennel. And that also did well. Bronze fennel can take over a garden. It spreads by seed. Um, so you need to take that into consideration, but the pollinators love it and I planted it for the caterpillars So eventually the caterpillars will eat this down Behind there, let me come around There's also down here Some honeysuckle So if you're looking for a drought tolerant vine consider um, Coral honeysuckle. I think this cultivars major wheeler So in the rest of the hot border, we have more cannas, which did well. Um, crepe myrtles, if you can grow crepe myrtles, they did okay. But after two weeks, most trees are going to start showing some, some wilting. The bindweed is starting to take over this bed. Um, but a lot of prairie plants, consider prairie pl plants too. If you want to draw a tolerant garden, there's also some salvias in here. Daylilies. So you can see the crocosma in front here. And these daylilies are starting to bloom away. The foliage looks a little ratty on these. Um, but you can see that they're blooming. Behind there is Rebecca Maxima. So think about coneflowers. But not all Rubecchias are drought tolerant. There's, this is Rubecchia maxima, and there's Rubecchia laciniata, which blooms later on in the season. That's not so drought tolerant. It will wilt and look bad, but um, that one needs a little bit more water because it's a more of a, a forest edge plant, whereas this one is more of a like um, prairie plant. Oh my goodness, you can see all the hoverflies and bees all over the bronze fennel so many insects in the front here in 
coming into the middle is Coreopsis. There are different types of Coreopsis. I forgot which this one is. This one is the one with the fine leaves. This does not like a lot of moisture, like it will rot if it gets a lot of moisture in the winter. So this is a very good drought tolerant plant. This one, Mexican hat, I think it's called. This sells seeds because I don't remember planting these in the front of the bed. And here is St. John's wort getting some yellow flowers and of course sedums as you can see sedums here starting to come into flower so that's it I just wanted to share a video with some drought tolerant plants so you can get some ideas if you wanted to incorporate some more resilient plants into your gardens um, these extreme weather events they say are going to become more frequent where it's either a lot of rain or no rain at all or a lot of heat um, so we need to start considering our water use in the garden and planting more resilient gardens so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you around next time until then goodbye